and good morning. This morning we are here at the Brick Barn uh, Vineyard and Winery and going to enjoy a tasting. This is my second time that I've been here at the Brickyard, but the first time I've actually recorded my tasting notes. So we are starting today with an Albarino and our uh, hostess today said that these are the grapevines that you can see out back and so maybe you see them just here a little bit behind me there we go behind the wine glass so let's give this alberino a swirl mm. so i have a very nice crisp bouquet on this and i'm getting like green apple off of this alberino So in this case, the, uh, the uh, green apple that I got off the nose translated to green apple that I'm getting off of the wine. Um, there's some other flavors that I'm getting here. I haven't quite picked out what I taste yet. I'm getting a bit of roundness off of this, so maybe a little bit of melon, green apple and melon here on this uh, Alberino. But that being said, this is really a very nice Alberino here at Brick Barn. We've moved on to our second wine uh, here at Brick Barn. This one is a Grenache Rosé. So a rosé is going to be a pink wine, and it's pink because it has only picked up a little bit of the color from the uh, uh, skins. Grenache is typically a red wine. This one has spent less time on the skin, so it only has, has had enough time to get a little bit of a pink color to it. So it's a very pale pink wine, giving it a swirl. Okay, maybe it's just the fact that it's got such a pink color. I feel like I'm getting either strawberry or maybe watermelon. And our server said she was reading the notes and they said that uh, maybe there was a hint of sliced almond. Now, here's my question. What is the difference in the smell of an unsliced almond and a sliced almond? I'd love to have somebody answer that for me. But I will say that maybe I get a hint, just a hint of almond at the back end of this bouquet. Okay, this is a very subdued wine. This would do very nicely on a picnic, or maybe you're just sitting out uh, on your patio enjoying a beautiful sunset. Um, maybe with a bit of a cheese and cracker plate. Not something I would probably serve with a meal myself, but just kind of by itself if you're out relaxing. This is one that's going to please a lot of people. Uh, but it's got a very light, very delicate, very subdued flavor. I do think that I get just a hair... Just a hint of strawberry, so, but still, quite a lovely little uh, white Grenache or Rosé Grenache. We've now switched to the red wines here at Brick Barn. And this first one is an 828 Pinot Noir clone, so it's a single clone wine it's got a beautiful color it's you've got that kind of um light rubyish 
color to it, not uh, quite, uh, you know, sometimes you'll see a, a pinot that's uh, much darker, more raspberry, well, this could be raspberry. Anyway, giving it a swirl. Hmm, in that black currant range of, uh, of uh, the bouquet. That is really nice. Next to no tannins on this whatsoever. So for those of you that are going to buy a wine and drink it right, right away, this would be a good choice. There's plenty of, of flavor. It fills the mouth nicely, kind of round edges, especially with that lack of tannins. And I would say that this is almost uh, got a flavor of a plum. So... Let me give one more taste here. Yeah, plum and, and maybe a hair of raspberry as well, just to, to brighten it up a little bit. Uh, so this is the 828 Clone Pinot Noir at Brick Barn. Sticking with the red wines, we have a 2017 Grenache. Very similar kind of raspberry-ish color to it. I'm getting bright notes of raspberry and cherry. Maybe something a little herbal in there here as well. I could just go get my jacket. Where's your jacket? Did you not bring it? Once again, very, very little in the way of tannins. A little bit more than that last uh, Pinot Clone, but very little in the way of tannins. Again, bright, fruit forward. Maybe some plum and raspberry again in this. Um, as I said, a little bit more tannic, so maybe a year or two more and it'll be even better. But uh, very nice Grenache. You know, normally, and we've said this before, Grenache is normally paired with Syrah and Mobedra uh, in order to give it a little more oomph and to balance it all out. But this one, I think this is very good as a standalone uh, wine. Again, great for a picnic, uh, great for um, maybe some lamb, something along those lines is what I would I think to pair this with. 2017 Grenache here at Brick Barn. Our final wine here is a Rhone blend. Uh, this is not a GSM because there's no Movedra in it. It is uh, Grenache and Syrah. Again, a beautiful raspberry to plum color. Maybe a little bit deeper, a little bit more plum-like than the last couple of wines that we've had. Mm. I'm getting current off of this one, I think. Mm. Very nice floral bouquet though as well. So let's give it a taste. Mm. Very nice. You get a little bit more depth in this because they've added the Syrah to the Grenache. So we're getting much more mid-range. This isn't going to be as big as like a, a big cap or anything like that. Again, very light tannins. So this is something that you can absolutely open up and drink right away. I'm going to give it one more taste. I'm getting blackberry to uh, maybe a, a really dark cherry somewhere in there. So this is the Rhone blend, which is Grenache and Syrah here at Brick Barn.